Okay, I've got this. Sound quality okay? Alright, so, new year, and had a couple of requests to do a reading just for the year to come, fairly standard practice, and over the holiday I got Marigold Tarot. Some of you know this, some of you don't. Some of you have probably seen the art uh, from this guy, just online. Figured a good time as any to try it out. But like. I need to turn up the light some. I've been looking through this, and there's a lot of... Uh, he's using a slightly different symbol set than the traditional Rider White. There's a lot of Indian... Uh, Symbolism, like continental Indian, not Native American. So I might be a little slow as I look up meanings on things, but get this started and shuffle the heck out of it. Because of course, when you first get a deck, it's in numerical order all the way through. Hey, Wander. Oh, yes, and the Marigold on the back. And this is obviously a very scientific and exact process. Like those of you that have seen me work with the True Black deck, it's a little different. Like the contrast is not quite as sharp. The gold is more gold paint and less gold leaf. You know, there's less, uh, it's kind of a uniform gloss over the entire card. It's still very nice looking. Like, King of Rings, uh, using rings instead of coins or pentacles. The cardstock is basically playing cards. Like, I don't think you'll be able to see this on the webcam, but you can you remember that uh, texture that poker cards have? They ha These have the same texture, too. Yes, Wander bought me a uh, three-card kind of a sampler pack from this deck as a gift at one point. So I've got those extra. Like, let's see if I can actually give you guys an idea of that texture. I'm not sure how good the resolution is going to be with it. I'm going to run my fingernail over it.
So you kind of get the idea. But because it's that poker card kind of material, they're very easy to shuffle. Not like some decks where it's the heavy pasteboard. Yeah, and this isn't the best camera either, DP. I haven't used it yet, Nalu. So, not really sure how it's going to read out for it. That's part of the reason I'm doing this. See what sort of voice it has, you know, what sort of attitude I've got going on here. It may be a sassy bit. Okay, I think that's got it shuffled enough. What's got going on here? So you can see better. Like, one of these days, I've got to get a better camera set up for this, but it's what I got at the moment. Okay, so, Ace of Rings crossed by the King of Wands, or Knight of Wands. Three of Cups as the goal. Page of Swords as the foundation. Five of Wands in the past, Judgment in the future. Page of Rings for the Questioner. So, me, basically, or all of us, I guess you could say. Queen of Rings for, I can never remember if that's emotion or environment. Environment. I always get those two switched. The Queen of Rings in the Environment, Hermit for Emotions, Knight of Swords for a Final. Oh, it's a beautiful deck, I mean. I mean, look at it. Like I said, there's not a lot of difference in gloss value between the gold, the black, the white. It's all a uniform finish. So the gold doesn't really pop as much as you'd expect, but it's still pretty, just pretty looking cards. Anywho, Ace of Rings. He's got his own uh, meaning booklet that he has with this thing just because he's using uh, different symbolism than the standard deck. And unfortunately, my computer. Here we go. So, starting with the Ace of Rings. Ace of Coins, Ace of Pentacles, you know, however the deck represents it. He just uses rings. Uh, an Earth based suit. So, this card symbolizes wealth, prosperity, contentment. Uh, the eye, you see the eye here on her wrist, suggests vision and the presence of spiritual wealth alongside physical wealth. The wood anemone, this stuff, is a flower often associated with protection, adaptation, and a bright future. Crossed by the Knight of Wands, Like, I could just use my standard traditional booklet, but I want to see what his symbols are for the... Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands contains high, near foolhardy amounts of energy. 
This is the card that implies that impetuousness and grandstand present, as well as rashness, overconfidence, and infatuation, as the gladiolus represents. This card may signify a need to act more recklessly, be more assertive, and take the opportunity to be more brash and forthright. So this is the current situation as it were. And that strikes me as saying that you've got the resources, you might as well do something with them. We'll see how the rest of it goes. Three of Cups for the goal. Obviously a water suit. This card associates itself with friendships, ties, and bonds. Card of celebration. Golden tea to be shared pouring over onto jubilant sunflowers. Good intentions and news being passed from India. Oh, yeah. Kind of falls in line with what we had earlier. Page of Swords as the foundation. Swords is always kind of a tricky loop to do. Page of Swords lacks a head. Kind of self obvious there. Their insides entwined with a rose bush, a single dagger hanging from the vertebra of the component. This card concerns itself with vigilance, contemplation, thought, and growth of new ideas. However, these very ideas may lead to the head quite literally in the body in order to pursue a desire for an intellectual challenge. Still, a knife hangs over them, a reminder that caution is of utmost importance. So, sounds to me like, as the foundation, this is what the situation is built upon, lurking a bit too hard in thought and less on action. Five of Wands in the past. I don't have a physical booklet for this, so I'm having to do it by paging up and down. Uh, Five of Wands. This card, symbolize, no, this card signifies rivalry, obstacles, competition, and trickery. Wild mustard is an incredibly competitive plant when growing alongside wheat or other crops and can greatly reduce their yield. So this is wild mustard we've got here. So, that one's tricky in the past. Basically saying that maybe things have gotten a bit too fighty. Too much competition, uh, destroying good results. Judgment in the future. Our first major arcana. Kind of rough one to deal with. A figure bears down on another. Almost oppressive at first glance. They push their arrow-struck body into the depths of the We have experienced fundamental change, some of it painful, as alluded by the arrows. Judgment transforms us, as the bed of chrysanthemum flowers into which the figure falls refers to a place to rest, for birth, and arise from again, stronger and more complete. Judgment does not always appear positive in its execution, but ultimately seeks what is best for us. Painful lessons may need to be experienced in order to embrace true change. Hey, Sammy. Welcome in. Just going through a uh, reading for the year to come. So far, it's been interesting. Looks like we've got some bumps coming up. Moving on, Page of Rings. Page of Rings represents reflection, contemplation, learning, practical goals, and a reality. Page observes the ring carefully, reverence. This card rep 
This card concerns itself with new projects, taking tasks in hand, and finding reasonable ways to make them work within one. Neem leaves, now this is the neem plant, surround our page, the tree's many widespread uses in cosmetics, food, and medicine, a nod to the practicality of the So this marks the questioner, you know, me specifically, but basically everyone else who's asking what's going to happen in the world coming up as concerned with practical matters. You know, this is not a what's going to happen in terms of philosophy or what is beauty. This is about how are we going to get things going? How are we going to get work done? The Queen of Rings and the environment exemplifies intelligence, trustworthiness, security, generosity, forcefulness. She holds the ring overhead and turns her gaze upward. Contemplating the greater world past the trappings of gold and heavily adorned clothing. This is the card of nurturing, support, and responsibility. Presence of Neem, again. In uh, the case of the Queen of Ring, refers to the plant's protective and restorative properties. Its seeds are ground and used as a natural insect and pest deterrent for other crops. So, environmentally, we've got a lot of influence pointing towards helping each other, you know, not helping yourself, but making a making an environment that encourages growth, encourages uh, betterment of just everyone involved. Like, Queen of Rings is not a personal card. It's not a me card. It's an us card. The Hermit, in, an, in Emotions, kind of straightforward there, but I'm going to go to the page anyway all the specifics this has written down for. The hermit sits quietly and considers his next move. He is surrounded by young Amla branches, a symbol of connection with the divine when beginning to look inwards. The lantern shines brightly in the darkness, a metaphor for new per perspectives and spiritual enlightenment. The hermit expresses our need for solitude and personal reflection. We must make time to take self-inventory of our ability. When we find ourselves overwhelmed while navigating the problems and lives of those around us, we make certain that we reserve time to ourselves. So, you know, I think everyone here can agree that everyone's feeling a bit overwhelmed by recent events. And this kind of just hits the nail on the head with that. You need to take time to make sure that you're healthy. You can't help others if you, if you don't help yourself. Finally, we've got the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Swords is considered intellectual, defensive, skilled, brave, and wrathful. Likewise, Snapdragons, the flowers around him, are also associated with duality, simultaneously linked with graciousness and deceptiveness. He can be tactless, casting asper aspirations, setting goals, and making statements without thinking twice about how appropriate they may be. So the Knight of, Wa the Knight of Swords has always been a very aggressive card i mean look at it got someone ready to attack maybe in the middle of an attack but it's not a foolhardy attack as such you know he calculates he understands his weapon he understands his foe so it is urging action perhaps even reckless action, but it is not saying foolish action. There's a difference there. So overall, the way I would take this reading is... Hmm. 
honestly, I'd say it's a fairly straightforward and simple reading. Basically saying, take what you've got and use it as best you can to make the world around you better. You know, that's really the main thing I'm getting out of this. But also don't kill yourself in the process. Like these three cards right here, the Page and Queen of Rings and the Hermit, are all urging you to be careful about what you do, to think about what you do. And also not to let it turn into a competition. You know, this Five of Wands over here. We've had that. We've seen what happens with that. I'm not sure I would say optimism. It's not... This isn't a reading saying things are going to be all right. This is a reading saying we need to make things all right. This is saying that we have the opportunity, we have the place to put our foot, and we have the start of the path and the first step, but we need to actually go with it. You know, we can't just sit back and hope for the world to get the way we want it to be. You know, the door is unlatched, but we need to use our hand to open it. And this initial cross right here, especially the Ace of Rings, basically is saying that whatever resources you have that you don't need for yourself can be better used for others. And that's not necessarily a material advantage sort of thing. It's not like money or food or, you know, any of the above. It can be that, but it can also be things like if you have the time to listen to someone, if you have advice for someone. Yeah, it's very straightforward. It's not as abrupt, I would say as the True Black or the Scapini. It's very... what's the word? It's calm, is the way I'm getting this. It's very much, you've asked a question, so it answers you. It's kind of just open and shut. Like, the Scapini has a tendency to grab you and shake a bit, and the True Black will reach past your question and start digging if it feels the need to. This one is more... You know, this one's more laid back in its own way. Hey, reading. How's it going? Yeah, overall, this is a... What's the, it's a positive reading, I'd say, for the coming year. Uh, but it's definitely one saying that you don't have, well, we don't have the option of just sitting back and letting things happen. Yeah, it really is, DT. I'm probably going to have to do more readings to get a better feel for it, but it, just off this one, it's striking me as being more of just a conversational deck. That gives us our first reading of the year. Welcome to 2020. Hopefully, we can do something worthwhile with it. Yeah, just some of the examples of cards in this deck to give you an idea of the visual style. Like, here's the star. Hey, Green Soul. Thanks for following. I Oh, and for everyone here... I should have started this should have started off with this, but I know it's been a long time since I've been streaming, and honestly, I'm not sure what sort of schedule I'll be keeping from here out. 
I'm going to try and get back into things, but I was not having the best of times with the previous stream sessions. Yeah, I just got this deck uh, over the holiday green solds, the Marigold deck. You might have seen it online here and there. The artist, oh, what's his name? Ah, Amrit Brar. For those of you on uh, Tumblr, he did the shitty, hor shitty horoscopes series. Yep. And just on a... Yeah, <laughs> magpie brain. But just on the subject of the deck itself, you know, if any of you were thinking about trying to get hold of it, the box it comes in, no. very sturdy. Like, this is not a bookstore uh, cardboard fold box. This is a, a very heavy duty box. You can see how thick the material is. There. Yeah, no, this is not the. Uh, special edition you had to basically sacrifice an arm for. But still, it's very nice. The cards themselves are basically poker card material. So they're very easy to work with. They're a good size, at least for my hand. Like, the Scapini deck is a bit too long. Like, the Scapini has about another inch sticking out here, I want to say. So they're a little cumbersome to work with. But this is a good, you know, easily handle, handleable size. They're flexible. You don't really have to worry about bending or cracking these cards like you do some of the heavier types. So it honestly just overall is a very easy to approach, very personable deck. You know, don't let the images of death put you off. It's not scary by any stretch. Yeah, the black deck has a tendency for the cards to try and stick to each other because of the uh, because of the gloss imprinting on them. But yeah, this is death as the friend that we all have. You know, he's waiting for us to reach his house. Not in a hurry. Not impatient. We'll get there when we get there. Like, actually, that's kind of addressed in the symbolism on the Lover's card when I was reading his uh, descriptions for these. How clearly can you see that? I'm kind of getting a small screen on my end of things, so I'm not sure how easy that is for you guys to see the details. Basically, the way the Lover's card is detailed in this deck is these, uh, both of these figures are brides. You know, they're done up as bridal figures. They're wearing uh, feminine attire, bridal crowns, the whole works. And the symbolism behind it is there's a, uh, a saying, I believe, in India that we are all brides to death. Or, in death we are all brides to the divine, something like that. And that's what he was running with here. Also, yes. Yeah, and I wouldn't say this is really a dark deck as such. Like, it approaches the symbols of death, sure. But death doesn't necessarily need to be scary or evil or any of that. You know, it's a natural occurrence. It's the thing that happens. Really, the only problems that people have with death is being scared of it, because they can't control it. But yeah, he uses a lot of symbolism that is not present on the 
Ryder White style of deck, just because he was going with a different cultural setup. Like, let me see if... I, yeah. The way he did the Wheel of Fortune, for instance. This is a chaff cutter. It's a... Uh, it's used to cut up straw for livestock. But it's also known for, if you're not paying attention, it will take your fingers off. Like, I'm not sure if you can see it very clearly there, but some of those hands are missing bits. So he's going with things that are known in the Indian, like, cult, uh, continental Indian understanding of the world. You know, they know these symbols. These are just parts of their culture. So it's a little different. But it's an interesting take on things. We've got chariot on a bicycle, which is more of a uh, self-controlled take on the card than the Westerners usually do. But it's also saying that you need to stay in control of the situation or you're going to fall over. Kind of inherent in the symbol. There's a lot of pomegranate imagery in this. Uh, a lot of vegetable in imagery in general, like plants, trees, that kind of thing. <laughs> Bicorn. <laughs> but like, you look at the way he represents the emperor. That's about as quintessential continental Indian as you can get. And one thing that I noticed earlier, and he actually calls out in his book, between the emperor and the empress, if you look, they're sitting in the same chair, in the same setting. You know, everything is the same except for the person themselves. So you've got that nice bit of duality there, which is intentional. We've got the Nine of Wands being sunflowers. We've got uh, Atar. I think that's the name of life for you know, the Eight of Wands, or Eight of Swords. I can talk. Don't mind me. I don't think the priest and priestess do that. Let me look. Priestess. Like we've got the sun with a lion skull. Got the ace of cups with a pomegranate in the skull. See that? So the hierophant. You know, basically the high priest is notably different from the high priestess because they approach very different subjects. The hierophant is more calling people to a task. You know, we must do a thing. Whereas the high priestess is more about contemplation and about understanding. Now, very different cards. Also, yes, the artistic the word layout of the cards is very nice. You know, very, you know, it's artistically pleasing just on its own merit. Yeah, the composition. So, any. Questions just while we're here. You know, questions about the deck, questions about the other decks I've got, any of that.
So this is an informal stream. I'm not sure how long I intend on it on going, that kind of thing. Basically, as long as there's interest, I'm, I can stick around. Also, I apologize for the somewhat limited camera setup. I've got a webcam up on a uh, tripod here. Do I see myself using this deck more often than others? Uh, whenever it's up to me to choose a deck, I usually go by feel. So if it's a casual question, if it's something that's just, you know, let's just bang on the wall and see what responds. I usually go with, like, the white deck, the Dragon Age deck, some probably this deck from now on. But if it's a more weighty question, you know, something with a bit more kick behind it, I'll probably lean more towards the True Black or the Scapini. You know, it's that kind of deal. So it's more about the question than about me. Do I think doing a reading with another deck would mush things up or clarify from a different view? Honestly, it's always from a different view. Even if I did another reading from this deck on the same question, just again, it would be another point of view on the same issue. So... There's no way to really muddle things as such, but I could end up confusing myself, if you see what I'm saying. You know, if I am attempting to do multiple interpretations on the same subject, same question, but switching between symbol sets, I may start reading into one meanings from another. Uh, you're not entirely wrong, Nalu. Though, the way I tend to look at it more with those two is the Scapini is more personal, but it's not going to put up with your shit. Like, it is very much a personal level of sit down and drink your damn tea. The True Black is more... You guys know that feeling when you walk into a cathedral that's not having service and it's just empty and silent and you are and that silence is imposed on you. That's kind of what the true black hat's going. It is very it is a very impersonal but heavy feeling. You know, it doesn't care about you. So, like, yes, they're both decks that give rougher re responses in their own way, but they do it in very different ways and from very different angles, if that makes sense. Now, they will smack your teeth out and call you an idiot to your face, but, you know, that's only if it's, a call if it's called for. One thing I do like about this deck in particular is I, I know I mentioned before that it's very easy to handle this deck but because of that bit of texturing that I mentioned, like the poker card texturing, the cards move across each other very easily without being you know, without sliding too much they don't, they don't go flying across the table but they don't stick to each other so they're very easy to shuffle Yeah, no pressure at all. It's just, you know, while we're here, if there's any questions, you know, should I grab one of my other decks and do another reading? Should I do another reading with this deck? It's up to you guys. Also, don't mind my phone occasionally going off. Job reading. 
for you, for someone else? You know, what kind of job reading? Basically, what is your question? And do you have a preference on deck? Now, basically, depending on what sort of question you want to approach will determine things like what sort of spread I use, what sort of deck I might suggest, that kind of thing. Like, sure, I can just pop down some cards in the Celtic Cross and tell you what they say, but that may not answer the question you want answered. Yeah, take your time. No pressure. Now try to think of it like... Think of the deck as a person and you're trying to ask them a question. So tell me about my job is different from should I consider this about my job? You see where I'm getting. Also, yes, I have various little stones and trinkets around just because use them to try and you know weight this down a bit like here's one for your magpie brain nice labrador right Not sure how well I can get the fire going here, but you get the idea. Let's... Various shinies. Yeah, I also was kind of using them to be like, okay, where's the edges of my camera? Yeah, Wander took me to the... Uh, museum out in Ottawa where they have you know as in most museums a natural history area and it was all shinies okay so basically you're looking for kind of situational assessment at work right Well, let's see what I've got here. Because recently I've been uh, experimenting with, uh, I found on a site eight useful spreads, which is, you know, I've got little cheat sheets here for them because, because, including one that's always fun, the what the fuck spread. Or when shit is all fucked up. But let's try what they call the root cellars. We're getting at the root of a thing. 
Well, yes, nerd. Also, do you have a preference on deck, or should I try one with the uh, uh, the Marigold for this? I forget if I have a command put together. I did at one point. I might have gotten rid of it. There we go. Well, let's see what the Marigold gives us. And if you want after that, I can drag the black out. Also, yeah, I could never do the arch thing. I just, I don't know why I can't get it to work. Yeah, pack this one in too. However often I end up doing this. So, okay. We start with the issue surface. We have death crossed by world. That's interesting. Well then. What lies beneath? Page of Cups. Below that, Nine of Wands. Below that, Star. Hmm. Definitely gonna have to look this up. Definitely got a lot of change coming your way. On the surface of things. <laughs> like, death has always been a card of change. The way he's got it written up. Death is depicted as a farmer. His head is haloed with a pattern resembling wheat. His hand holding a short sickle traditionally used for harvesting crops. Death operates as the farmer does, allowing the seed of life to have their time to grow and flourish before making room for life to take its course. The land on which he stands is currently barren, but growth occurs behind him, implying that new life will soon take root. So definitely change crossed by the world, which is basically you know the world, everything. So on the surface of at your work, there's gonna be a lot of upheaval. Nalu. Okay. Now, what's going on beneath the Page of Cups? The Page of Cups is represented by a skull overflowing with oranges and orange blossoms. 
This card concerns itself with budding relationships and ventures, creativity, new desire, and intuition. Oranges and their blossoms are bright, cheerful, fragrant, youthful. It implies that inspiration is on the upswing, new and exciting possibilities, ideas, will may be explored, and that stagnation in old habits means challenge. Below that, we've got the Nine of Wands. The card symbolizes persistence and resilience in the face of adversity. Despite being challenged when pursuing new goals, it is important to rise to the occasion and stand proudly, much as the sunflower does. Below that is the star, which is a symbol of hope, primarily. First of the celestial siblings, the star is symbolized by a house crow's skull, six feathers, and a star etched in gold overhead. The markings on the crow's skull are intended to evoke drops of water, which is associated with purity. In folklore, many bird species are commonly believed to navigate using stars. We prepare ourselves to navigate through new beginnings, new opportunities, liberation, and freedom in the same fashion. Like, I'll, see, I'll try and get it so you can see the details. focus. Like you see those marks right in the middle of the skull's forehead? Those are the water drops that we're talking about. At any rate. So, the way this looks to me, honestly, about your job, is that I can see this going two ways. The initial just knee-jerk reading of this is that someone or something that's been standing in the way of progress is going to be removed. But in the process, it's basically going to shake the whole house. The other way around is kind of... I don't even know. The other way you could look at it is that everything is going to start changing around you, but you can't let that throw you off. You know, you've got to keep your eye on your guiding star. You've got to, you know, keep your spine straight. You've got to do, you've got to do what you can. You know, it could be that, but basically there is going to be a lot of change happening soon. That's about all I can tell you. It's just a matter of how well you weather the storm, as it were. Not going to be a necessarily easy change. I mean, starts with death. Not necessarily literal death, but something is being removed. You know, death is not a passive card. Anyhow. So, while we're here, anything else boiling across people's brains, or should I just close this down for the day? Yeah, sure, anytime. Like, I like trying to help people. I like trying to do things for people. I just get frustrated sometimes when it's like, I'm doing things and it doesn't seem to do anything. Like, you know how it gets. Build something, write something, and... Okay, now what? You got one, Nala? What's up?
That's a pretty heavy question. Yep. Be right back. I'm going to go grab the big black deck. I mean, a deck like this, you don't just stick it in a cardboard box and call it a deck. I mean, it's not a mean deck. That's one thing that people always seem to conflate when I say that the decks don't take your shit is that they actively go for nasty readings or anything like that. And that's not the case. But they also don't sugarcoat things. They don't, you know, cushion your feelings. They tell you what you ask. Whether or not you like that is immaterial. You asked a question, you get the answer. Some of it's a, a question of scale, yes. Some of it's also a question of what it tells you may be something you need to hear, but you don't particularly want to hear. You know, we've all been there. That question everyone always dreads to ask, am I the problem? Because they don't want to know if the answer is yes. But let's see what's on the road for Nalu. I'm here. Sit. Stay. Oh my. Um, yeah, that's the tower there. A little hard to get all this on the camera, but... So for the initial for the situation in question, we've got the Seven of Cups crossed by the Ace of Swords. The Seven of Cups is a card of fantasy, daydreams, 
illusions. You know, it's looking at what you want to see as opposed to what's really around you. The Ace of Swords, on the other hand, is a card of truth, objectivity, breakthroughs, reasoning, you know, that kind of thing. So basically this right here is saying that all those nice, pretty little dreams and lies that you've been telling yourself to make things nice have just been slashed by your hand or by someone else. You know, we don't have time for that. We have to just cut through all the smoke and move on to what's real. It's not going to be painless by any stretch. You can see the cut uh, petals here and there. Where the sword is just slashed through the roses. Your goal, this page of coins. Now, I've said it before, I am not one of these people who can just rattle the, the meanings off out of my own. I've got to use them. Nothing wrong with it, it just takes a little while sometimes. So the Page of Coins is basically a card of doing for yourself for practical results. You know, it's not asking questions about, you know, why does the universe behave the way it does? what will happen after I die. It's not concerned with that kind of stuff. It's concerned with what can I do to get what I need in this world. So, you know, very practical concerns are sitting in your goal. Your foundation, I think that's the seven of wands. No, the Eight of Wands. I miscounted. Uh, basically, it's a message. So, the current situation springs from some sort of news that you received. You know, some... Some action, you know, something came to light that caused everything else to ripple out from it. In your past, Queen of Cups... No, oh, Page of Cups, my mistake, not the Queen. Basically, how to put this, because this in the past slot is a little difficult to put into words, really. You know, the Page of Cups is a childlike figure, someone who cares without fear of being hurt, someone who helps without thought of reward, you know, someone who always reaches out to a like, it's a little difficult to see on the card, possibly, but she's got a rabbit on her shoulder, she's giving it a cup full of wine got fish just around her, you know, she's a generally soft and caring individual so either you knew someone like that fairly recently, and they caused something or were attempting to be that person past. In the future, we have the Ten of Cups, which is actually a very nice card. It's this that I worry about, honestly. But here for the, the Ten of Cups is it's basically a what's the is the end results of growth. You know, it is when everything comes together Everyone works together, and in the end, you are rewarded with everything that you were trying to achieve. Uh, yeah, it's like the the key the key words for this card: happiness, maturity, unity, and forgiveness. You know, it is a house coming together to do what it must. It's like if you look closely at some of these cups. You can see that they're cracked. So you don't necessarily need to be perfect to achieve you know, the goal. No one's perfect. No one's unhurt. No one's unbattered. But they can still help. 
For here, as the questioner, we have the tower. So this represents you. And the tower is always a symbol of catastrophic change. You know, your foundations have been knocked loose. You've been jostled off your feet. You know, you've tumbled down the stairs. Life as you knew it has been swept away. But by the same token, you now have a clean place to build from. So it's not necessarily a bad card, but it is never a comfortable one. In your environment, we have the Five of Cups, which is, I mean, look at it. It's a, shat it's a, a cup that's been shattered. It's a card of loss, of sorrow, difficulty. Everything around you basically is dark and broken and jagged. But there is still hope, like... You can see how one of the cups is not broken and still holds water. There's still hope. You just have to get through all the shards. Your emotions are signified by the sun. Card of warmth, insight, celebration. Ah. It, I mean, look at it got this, the lady dancing among sunflowers. It's a nurturing card. It's attempting to, you know, give warmth and light where it is needed. Consider the sun above. So, in the emotion slot, it seems to me that you are basically doing... You, you really want to help. You know, that's the big thing, is that you want to help. Finally, I believe that's the Nine of Swords. Yes, the Nine of Swords. And this one's a worrying one. Basically, it's, you know, nightmares, desperation, the loss of hope. So, the way I see this, because the final card's always kind of a shading over the rest of the read. The way I'm looking at this and seeing this is that very recently, everything you thought you knew, everything you thought you knew, was knocked off the table. And you're having to try and reinvent who you are, reinvent what you want to do, reinvent where you want to go. And it's not easy, and you're honestly scared of it. I wouldn't, you know, no one will blame you for that. It seems hopeless. It seems like you've got nothing but embers and ashes around you. But, you know, you still have the sun inside you. You still have the house, you know, all of your friends, all of your family working together with you. And you're going for something that you will end up being able to hold in your hands. So, honestly, all I can say is it's been rough. It will probably continue to be rough. But you can't let that stop you. No, it's going to suck. It has already sucked. It will continue to suck. But there is a goal at the end of the road. This, you know, this isn't suffering for no reason. Challenge accepted. Are you going to let this stop you? However, to get things going, you're going to have to be very honest with yourself about a lot of things that you may not want to. You know, you're going to have to look at everything about yourself, about other people. You know, examine your world and cut the truth from the lies. It's not going to be comfortable.
So, on that cheerful note, So the stream's been going for about an hour. Oh yeah, anytime. I mean, you know how to find me. Any other questions, concerns, etc.? Uh, you want a future reading for yourself? I mean, you don't have to ask if you don't want to. You know, there's no pressure at all here. I remember. Okay, so do you want the big black deck or should I grab something else? You know, now that you've seen how it handles that particular sort of question. All right. See what it tells you. I always have to kind of pile shuffle this deck because, like I mentioned, the cards kind of stick together a bit. And it's such heavy card stock that it is not easy to shuffle normally. Rest well, Wander. Take care of yourself. See you, DT. Thanks for dropping by. probably work out some way to have music playing during these just so it's not long periods of silence while I'm shuffling a re However, the laptop that I'm using for this at the moment is kind of a dinosaur in all honesty. I'm not sure how well it could handle all that. Okay. What have we got for Bell? This is interesting.
I mean, there's a difference between this is interesting and oh no. Like, you don't have any outright worrying cards just straight off the bat. This one, the four of coins, or is that no, five of coins, is a bit of a worry. But where it's located, I'm less concerned, honestly. The rest are interesting, but not worrying. So, let's get started. We've got the Three of Wands crossed by the Page of Wands. Or is that the Knight? The Knight of Wands. So the Three of Wands crossed by the page of uh, the Knight of Wands. Three of Wands is a card of exploring, uh, adventure. Like, if you look at it, you've got a bird diving into the depths after its prize. It's a, it's a card of striking out to find the thing. And the Knight of Wands kind of backs that up. You know, the, Knight, the Knight of Wands is brash, courageous, blunt. It very much sums up, it's very much summed up by the phrase, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. It doesn't care what's along that line. So your current situation seems to be that you've got your eye on something and be damned if anything's going to stand in the way your goal is the empress where is she empress Some things up hedonism. You know, uh, your goals are basically you want all the nice things in life. You know, the foods you enjoy, soft clothing, feeling comfortable, feeling warm, feeling loved. You know, she is the card of pleasure, basically. So you're oriented on that as a goal in a broad sense. Your foundation. Seven of Wands. Foundational card is kind of like, you know, what is everything built upon, kind of in the name. And the Seven of Wands is a card of being territorial and defensive, you know, feeling like you have something that you need to protect and that everything is coming for it. You need to fight for your position, a struggle just to maintain ground. In your past, we have the Ten of Wands, which is a card of feeling overwhelmed, feeling burdened. Like you see a beetle with just everything stacked up on it, and another one right, you know, along for the ride, even. This, even, this isn't even just, I'm carrying my share, it's I'm carrying you too. So in your past, things were a bit overwhelming, shall we say. And in the future, we have the chariot. Which is basically a card of wrestling things to your will. You know, it's a card of success, but it's success after struggle. It is pulling the, tr pulling the vehicle back onto track despite its uh, intentions to the contrary. And it says here, direct quote, the chariot is the embodiment of success, the taste of victory after years of struggle and uphill battles. It is the finish line. You are represented by the three of coins. which is a card of teamwork and synergy. Like the three, if you, you know, I'm not sure you can see it very easily, but each coin is 
giving something different. We've got seeds, water, and soil. One from each. So it's a card of teamwork in its own way. You know, it's bringing different things together to make something better. Making something more than the sum of its parts. Your environment is the hermit. Card of withdrawal. You know, trying to step away from the world. But, you know, doing so to reflect, to, to try and search for an answer. So that in the environment position is kind of odd in its own way. But it makes me think that your current environment is a quiet one, one kind of sh with everything shut out of it, so that you can think. You, know, you have intentionally emptied out your local environment. Just so you can try and get your head on straight, as it were. In your emotions, we have the Five of Coins. Which is, like I said, not really the best card. It's a card of hard hardship and rejection. Uh, you know, we've got the bag that's torn open and coins falling out of it and shattering on the ground. It's a feeling like everything that you had is worthless. It's, you know, it's that punch in the gut feel when someone rejects you. you know, your emotions at the moment are focused in that direction for whatever reason. And the final card we have is Justice, which is different from Judgment. A lot of people confuse the two. Justice is about fairness about impartiality you know everyone gets their due whichever side of the balance they happen to stand on so taking that as the final card and taking this as a whole it looks to me like you have a you know you have a goal in your sights you know what you want and you're all set to charge for it. But getting to this point has been rough, you know, as symbolized by your foundation and your past. Even getting to this point where you can see your prize has been pretty hard on you. And at the moment, you really should, and at the moment are, taking a moment to consider everything that's gone on and consider if it's what you really want, and even if it is, do you deserve it? You really need to ask some questions about yourself, I think. You may be correct. Your goal may be all well and good. You may be heading straight forward with no other problems involved. But make sure. That's the big thing I'm getting out of this, is that because of past hardships, it may seem like you're in the clear and you're home free, but don't lunge for something that you don't actually want. Does that make sense? Or to the point, does that help? I'm glad that I could answer that for you then. So yes, taking it in that regard, basically I I would make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row first. I'm sorry? 
I mean, I I tend to do that. I've had people. I mean, you've seen some of the screaming that happens with some of my readings. Admittedly, I delight in the cries of witchcraft, but you know. Okay. So, I think I'm going to call it there. We've been at this about an hour and a half. I'm glad I could get some of that out for you guys. I'm glad I helped. Um, I'll look into trying to get back on some sort of a schedule at some point. You know, I'm still kind of up in the air over that myself. I'll keep you guys informed. Thank you, everybody, for coming by. Uh, yeah, I can upload it to YouTube. Like, Twitch keeps videos for a bit, but yeah, I'll, I'll import it to YouTube if you like.